Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which was the Winchester Mystery House. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page and our BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page, as well as the YouTube video on Bun. Yeah, subscribe. That thing gets past that, right? Well, you can be here. We could still call it out, right? Yeah. Even though it's season five. And this get is the second, it. This is the second season now on the network. Really, if you want the latest updates on all your ghoul boy content, well, you gotta subscribe to Bun. What a great season premiere. I had a lot of fun. Did you? Yeah, I mean, I had fun until the end huh. when I had to sleep in Sarah Winchester's bedroom where she died. Oof. So that wasn't my favorite. Always leave a tip for your maid. If you're gonna die room. in your hotel room, yeah. leave him a little Leave uh, him a fiver. fiver. Yeah. Well, at least we agree. So you'll notice that our library is missing. That's just temporary. Uh, we're doing some remodeling in the library. So Shane took the liberty of drawing this on the wall. I drew it. Why'd you say that like, uh, like Ringo Starr? I drew it. <laughs> Let's get into some questions. Yes, we'll start in Gramtown. Here's one from Alex Pawlowski. Mm -hmm. How different did it feel sleeping in different rooms? Love you guys. Well, going into this season, you specifically wanted to put me in more perilous situations. You wanted to uh, instill the fear within me that, that you felt was missing the last season. Me and a vocal portion of our audience. So, felt that maybe you'd gotten a little too cocky and stopped believing in ghosts. That's okay, I, just because. I, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Anyway. I equate it to like, you know, when you jump into a pool for the first time. Oh, and after you a acclimate. Are you talking a cold pool? Yeah, like a cold pool. And you're like, ooh, that's some cold water, burr. Yeah. And then after like maybe 10 minutes of doggy paddling around, you're like, whoa, this water's great. You're like, I live here, baby. It's great. I don't now believe that the pool wasn't cold in the first place. Mm -hmm. I'm just acclimated. The rooms were so far away. You at one point screamed my name at the top of your lungs. Yeah. I also screamed your name at the top of my lungs. Ryan! Shane! Ryan! I do think that I had a worse time with you not in the room because you are a defense mechanism. You do bring me a level of comfort when I'm in these perilous sleeping situations so I could turn to Shane and get joy out of annoying him by keeping him awake, which also in turn makes me feel less scared. This time, all I had to do, uh, all, the only person I had to talk to was myself. I loved it because I slept. Yeah, you slept like a baby. Right. Yeah. I slept zero seconds, so. so uh, a good experience. No. Um, okay, YouTube, here we go. Xander Long, 1834 in the episode, it says, definitely said, uh, don't leave after he said he was going to turn it off. Shall we go to that? Hasta luego, turning this off. Oh, yeah. that does sound like don't How'd leave. you miss that? You're desperate for these things. You didn't pick that up, you, you know, up in the little editing I room? spend hours and hours looking through footage and audio and after a while, I get a little sleepy and sometimes I miss something. And a lot of times I'm up late looking at this footage so, that might have been a latter day find for me, right. um, unfortunately. For postmortem, this is from Unsolved Spams. This is a very important question for Shane. Dude, I gotta know, how were those peanuts? Um, they were good, they, they were just regular peanuts. I got them from the airplane. And uh, one thing people don't understand about these ghoul hunts, boy, you get hungry. So um, we only have a limited amount of questions that we answer in these postmortems, yeah. and this is, this is the question you've chosen here? You know what kind of questions I'm gonna choose. Okay, let's go to Facebook then. Let's go Facebook. Uh, this comes from Aubrey Horowitz. All right, ghoul boys, welcome back. As far as hearing a whisper and declaring it a woman's whisper, turns out whispering doesn't use one's vocal cords, so there's absolutely no way to determine if the whisperer would have been a man or a woman. It was a shuffle, Ryan. You heard a shuffle. Hashtag Shaney. Uh, don't appreciate the tone first off. Yeah, okay, I didn't need the repeat of the I like sentence. that. I Did like you? That. Yeah, he's laughing it up. Look, the big guy's having a big old giggle over it. It was Yay! a, it was a shuffle, Ryan. You heard a shuffle. In retrospect, sometimes I hear something and I think that may have sounded like a woman. Uh, maybe it did in the moment. We reviewed the footage, or the audio, I should say, and it, it did just sound like a whisper. But we did hear a whisper, in fact, and I don't think it was a shuffle. I just think it's very convenient that every time you think we've found a ghost, it's always in the next room. That's all I'm saying, and that's fine. That's, I've stated mine. How is that convenient? There's a recording device when we're not there. It's, it's better than us being there. It's, it doesn't lie, it has no agenda. 
There, when you have a, an, an audio recorder in a room, there's no agenda being pushed by the audio. It's just recording what's happening. So I don't. I know. I know it is. So let's take it back over yeah. to Graham Nation. Banana Vore Corner. It's the first time we've mentioned Vore on this show. Hopefully the last. You get it? <laughs> For postmortem. <laughs> man, this season premiere was so good. Shane, what's the most spooked you've ever been in an episode? And don't say you never get scared because we all saw you get spooked in the body shoot laughing my oh, ass man. off. You just got roasted. I did. You, you know what? That? I did get spooked in the body shoot because there was a funny little frog in there or something. What the fuck was that noise? Guys? Guys? Okay. Guys? <laughs> you remember? Did you hear that? <laughs> um, and there is an episode this season uh, in which our individual investigations uh, is the most adrenaline I've ever had on a, on a shoot. I can attest to the fact that he does not get scared. He is uh, almost like a robot. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with him. Even when we're placed in comically horrific situations, he has a grin on his face like a psychopath. Oh yes, last question. Uh, this comes from Katie Murray on Facebook. Important question, since the postmortem is airing on Halloween, will you be in costume? This is not for this postmortem. Next this postmortem. Is for the next postmortem. You know, we'll see. It would be fun to do something fun. You know? I think we're going to dress up, and uh, if you're a fan of the postmortem, I think you'll be pleased with what we do. We are gonna do it, right? I'm down. Okay, that does it for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Thank you for sending your questions in to the aforementioned social media accounts. Uh, make sure to watch the episode on Friday and send in your questions to the BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page, the BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page, or comment directly on the video itself on Bun. And I can see in my peripheral vision, he's unfolding something <coughs> that I imagine is going to be the dumbest words ever uttered on film. So let's just get this over with. I have a statement I'd like to read. Don't call it a statement. <clears throat> it makes it sound too official. I know we like to have fun here, but I'd like to take this moment to get serious with you, fleetingly. As it has now been written in the newest editions of history books applied to grades K through 12, you the viewer along with the rest of the world are by now no doubt aware of the devastating death of Jean who is French fries, a lead character in the acclaimed and groundbreaking series, The Hot Dogga, uh, I mean, I know I'm just french fries, but I think you could maybe choose not to be complicit in the destruction of the universe. Uh, commissioned by Ryan Steven Bergara. No. In the months since his departure, I have experienced an outpouring of grief from fans around the world. You put from the desk of Shane Madej on the top of this. It just doesn't make sense. And I feel you. I'm right there with you. Death is often senseless. But I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to fully disclose my involvement with this whole sad affair. Because while this death felt very real to many people, I have to level with you. It was fiction. Uh, I know, it sounds crazy. But the whole story, from beginning, has been fiction, dreamed into the world by a couple of ghoul heads. Me and Ryan. That's, there's no plural there. It's but you here. know what? It got to us, entranced us, and we forgot. But I was the one who put the words to the page and struck Jean from this mortal coil. It was me. I did it. It served the story, I thought. It felt right. But I had no idea the devastating impact that would follow. And I'm sorry. Oh my God. I think we all could use some time to marinate, be with our loved ones, and celebrate a life. And simultaneously, I'd like to allow a little more time for this story this wonderful, heartbreaking pageant to write itself this is through me. This is truly To flow from the cosmos and seep through my dreams onto the page so that I might deliver a satisfying conclusion to what has been called the odyssey of the modern age. Thank you for your time. Please bear with me. And when the time comes, Buckle your seatbelts. Oh. My God. <laughs>